Hello everybody, Drifty here from Driftwood Gaming, and in this RPG Maker Envy tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can add Albed to your RPG game. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to download a plugin, and this is a plugin from uh, XD Game Studios Engine. And once you've got that, uh, I'm going to put a link in the description below to where you can get that plugin. Once you've got that plugin installed, put it at the very bottom underneath all of the Yanfly plugins. Uh, that way there's no conflicting issues. Uh, we're going to go down to uh, the parameters here, and starting on letter A, we're going to add the, these letters in the same order. So, you're going to double click here, and you're going to type in Y. Underneath that, you're going to type in P, and then L, and then T, and then A, and then V, K, R, E, Z, G, M, S, H, U, B, X, N, C, D, I, J, F, Q, O, and W. Those are the translations from the Final Fantasy X version of Albed. Now, feel free to change this up to whatever uh, language you want it to be. This is just how you would do it if you wanted to, to replicate the Albed language from Final Fantasy X. So once you've got all your parameters set, Next thing we're going to do is we're going to open up our database. So you're also going to need a Yanfly plugin for this. You're going to need uh, the items core, and I'm going to put a link in the description below with uh, links to every plugin that you will need to make this work. So the only thing we're trying to do is be able to create an info eval. That way when we look at an item, it's going to set a variable to a value. So we're going to create 26 new items. One item for each Albed primer. We're going to uh, create one Albed Primer, copy, paste it, change the letter, and change the number. So let's create our first Albed Primer. Clear space for 26 items. Give it a name, an icon, a description. And in the name, include the first letter. In this case, it would be A. We're going to make sure that it's a regular item. Because I tried to do this with a key item before. And what happens is it's, for some reason it's adding one to the value. So make sure you copy these three things exactly. You're going to do a regular item. You're going to give it a scope. If you don't give it a scope, it adds one to the value and it offsets the, the language for some reason. There's a bug with the, the, the two plugins working in, you know, in tandem. So give it a scope of the user. I know it works this way. It may work with other scopes as well, but if you don't give it a scope, when you try to convert A, uh, it'll convert slot B for some reason. Uh, occasion, we're going to set it to menu screen and we're going to set this to consumable because once you've learned this letter, there's no reason it, to clog up your inventory with the useless item. So give it uh, consumable, menu screen, the user, and regular item. You're going to have it call in on a common event that we're going to be creating right now. But before we do that common event, we're going to go to the note tags and type in info eval in brackets, capital I and capital E. We're going to type dollar sign game capital V on variables dot set capital V on value. Now this is going to be a variable that you're going to have to find. So first thing, if you're not sure, just create a new event. Right click, insert new, control variables, and then go to the top here and find a free slot. Whatever free slot you use, keep uh, track of that number. So if we were going to use 15, we would type in Albed, and then we would use, instead of 29, in my case, you'd use 15. But we can see right here, I'm using slot 29 for the variable. Doesn't really matter, just remember what number you're using. Uh, you can Once you've done that, hit OK one time, and then from this menu, you can cancel. Press cancel, and press cancel. That's going to uh, store the variable, uh, just going to store the name of that variable. So we're going to reference that number. If you use 15, you'd put 15 here. In my case, I'm going to use 29. Then we're going to put a comma. And then we're going to put in 1. And then close the parentheses and end line and close out the info eval. Uh, once you've done that, right click. Uh, let's go to our common events. Create a new common event. Call it I'll bed. And then go back to your items. Now call on that common event. So uh, edit right here underneath the effects, go to other, go to common event, and call on that Albed common event. Once you've done that, you're going to continue to make all your items. So you're going to cop, right click this, copy that, paste it right underneath. Change the A to a B. Change this number from a 1 to a 2. Copy that, paste that, change, change the B to a C, change this number to a 3. Do the same thing for each item. So Copy, paste it again, change it to a D, change it to 4. E, 5, F, 6, all the way down till you get to Z. Now let's go to our common events. 
In your common events, we're going to make conditional statements. So we're going to right click, we're going to insert new conditional statement, conditional branch, it's under flow control. You're going to select that variable that we specified, whatever one we're calling with our info eval. If you use 15, then you would use 15. If you're using 29 like me, then you would just use 29. You're going to hit OK. Um, you're going to give it the value of 1, and then you're going to hit OK again. So now we've got this conditional branch that says if this variable is 1, when we're calling the common event, do what's inside of this conditional branch. So the first thing we're going to do, this is optional, we're going to right click, insert new, we're going to go to audio and video, and we're going to play a sound effect. I've chosen to pick the computer sound effect, but you don't even have to include one. You can show an animation, multiple sound effects, whatever flash you want, flash the screen. I've just decided to go with a simple sound effect. Underneath that, we're going to show text. So we're going to right click, insert new, I'm pretty sure you know where show text is at. Then we're going to say <clears throat> something to, along the lines of, you have deciphered a part of the Albed language. You could, this is up to you, what you wanted to say. But for A, what we're going to be doing is convert it to this language. So for A, we're going to say Y equals A. So we're saying the Albed language, since that's what we're talking about, has been converted into the, our native language of this letter. So Y equals A for the first one. Whatever dim background, uh, whatever background or window position you want is up to you. Then we're going to insert a plugin command. So we're going to right click insert new, go over to tab three, click on plugin command. Now inside this box, you're going to type capital C on code, no space, capital L on language. Then we're going to include a space. We're going to type capital L on learn, another space, and then capital A. Make sure you use all caps. Um, it might work with lowercase, but I know for sure it works with caps, so you might as well just put it in caps first time through. And that's it for the first one. So right click that whole thing, and then cop so copy it, and then paste it underneath. Now right click the conditional branch, change the one to a two. Make sure it's set to equals to. Not greater than or anything, just equals to. Uh, now that we've got this, we're gonna edit our text, and we're gonna say P equals B. We're going to edit our plugin command, so A, learn A, is now learn B. We're going to copy that, paste it down here. Same thing, except we're going to change the text. Uh, we're going to change the, the number from 2 to 3. We're going to change the text from L equal to L equals C. Change the plugin command to learn C. Going down, we're going to copy paste, change the conditional to 4. We're going to say T equals D. Then we're going to change the plugin command to learn D. Same thing, copy paste that. We're going to change the conditional branch to 5. We're going to say A equals E. We're going to change the plugin command to learn E. Copy paste. Change the conditional number to 6. We're going to say V equals F. Then we're going to change the plugin command to learn F. We're going to copy paste that. Change the, the conditional branch to number 7. We're going to say that K equals G. We're going to change the plugin command to learn G. Copy paste that. Change the conditional branch to conditions of 8. We're going to say that R equals H. Then we're going to change the plugin command to code learn, uh, code language learn H. Copy paste that. We're going to say now this time Albed condition uh, variable is set to nine. Now we're going to say E equals I. Then we're going to change the plugin command to code language learn I. Do the same thing for ten. We're going to say Z equals J, code uh, language learn J. Copy paste for eleven. On 11, you're going to say that G equals K, and we're going to learn K. Copy paste for 12. M equals L. We're going to say uh, our plugin command to learn L. We're going to copy paste that. We're going to change it to 13. We're going to say that S equals M. We're going to change the plugin command to learn M. For 14, we're going to say that H equals N, and we're going to change the plugin command to learn N. Copy paste that, change the variable to 15 this time. We're going to say that U equals O. And then we're going to do the plugin command to learn O. <clears throat> Underneath that, we're going to do number 16 for our variable. We're going to say B equals P. Code language, learn P. We're going to copy paste that and do number 17. We're going to say that X equals Q. We're going to change the plugin command to learn Q. Copy paste that. On 18, we're going to do N equals R. And then we're going to change code language learn to R. On number 19, we're going to change the text to say C equals S. We're going to change the plugin command to do code language learn S. We're going to copy paste that. And then we're going to change the variable to, to equal number 20. And on 20, we're going to change the text to say that D equals T. We're going to do code language learn T. 
on 21 we're going to do i equals u and change the plugin command to do code language learn u we're going to copy paste that for 22 we're going to say j equals v and we're going to change the code language to learn v now we're going to change albed number to 23 and we're going to do f equals w on the say and for the plugin command we're going to do code language learn w and then we're going to copy paste that to 24 now we're going to do q equals x and we're going to change the plugin command to learn x on 25 we're going to do o equals y and we're going to change code language learn to y and finally if albed conditional branch variable equals 26 we're going to change the text to say w equals z and we're going to change the plugin command to say that code learn code language learn z wow that was a lot but uh, if you stuck with me congratulations you're pretty much done with your albed language so now all you would have to do is um, award your items however you want to award your items uh, and for the sake of this demonstration I put all of the items in one chest but I would imagine you'd spread them out throughout your whole game so as the player progresses through the storyline he randomly finds one here randomly finds one there and then eventually when he gets to the town where everybody's speaking out bed and they tell a bunch of cool secrets you'll be able to uh, understand that language so let's take a look at the Albed language here. So if we look at this message that we wrote, um, it's all in Albed. So we can't understand, understand anything. But at the bottom, I put the alphabet. So this is A to Z, the alphabet. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up our box, getting all of our items, and we're going to use our Albed primer A. So when we use it, we set the variable to 1, so it's calling that uh, when we call the common event. So now it's let, giving us this text that says y equals a. So if we look at our albed now, we can see that all of the a's have been deciphered, and they're in a different color. So let's, uh, let's uh, read a couple more primers. Let's read b, c, and d. And if we look at our language down here, we can see that A, B, C, and D have been deciphered and they're in a different color. You can specify this color too. So let's go into uh, this event right here. So when you're writing your, uh, your text, there's a couple more uh, plugin commands that you'll have to use. So our plugin command to enable the text to be converted into Albed or whatever language you want, you're going to put a plugin command right before the show text. So we're going to right click, insert new, go to tab 3 at the bottom, we have a plugin command. And in this plugin command we're going to type capital C on code, no space, capital L on language. We're going to include a space here. We're going to put a capital E on enable. So once we've enabled that every uh, that plugin command, everything after that plugin command will be in Albed. So you have to make sure that you do a plugin command after the Albed language to let the game know that we're done doing our translations. So we're going to right click, insert new, do another plugin command, and in this plugin command we're going to type in co capital C on code, no space, capital L on language, include a space, capital D on disable. That's going to turn off the uh, the auto translate thing. So we're going to enable our our plugin command. We're going to show our text, and then this going to turn all of this text into Albed, and it's going to turn every command into Albed until you disable that. So. Uh, if we're going to have one message, it would be like that. If we want them to say several things, we would include our text in between those two. So this would this would be in, um, in between these two plugin commands. Now, if we were to do something like this, we've already disabled the plugin command. So everything after this will no longer be in Albed. So let's take a look at this again. So we've got our messages that's in our bed, and now we've, we're turning off the plugin, so it's no longer in our bed. It's that simple. So let's uh, check out all of our primers real quick, and see if every single one of them will convert like they're supposed to. B works for B. <clears throat> C works for C. D works for D. E works for E. And make sure you bug test this. 
um, before you put it in your game you want to do something like this so that you can test it out and make sure that it's working the way that it's intended to be working if it's not working make sure that you check the items if you make these items key items for some reason it's adding one to the value so when you learn when you read the, the book for a it's learning B and uh, this was a this I was gonna post this this uh, tutorial last night but I had some issues figuring out why it wasn't working right and I contacted uh, the author of the plugin and he said he doesn't understand why it's not working because it's working for him and uh, it's for some reason if you set these to key items they don't seem to be working right and also if you don't give them a scope they don't seem to be working right so just make sure that you give uh, your items a scope make sure you set them to regular items and it'll work uh, as intended Y works for Y, T works for T, S works for S, U works for U. Let's read these last three and then read our final message. Alright, we've read all of our primers. Welcome to Driftwood Gaming. This is an albed, but you can read it now. I love you. Please like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the next tutorial.